Hey everyone and welcome. Today we'll be building a Laravel 7 application and hosting it on AWS Elastic Beanstalk. We'll also be implementing continuous integration and continuous deployment through AWS code commit and code pipeline. Before we get started, let's briefly go over what we'll be working with. For this video, I'm assuming that you already have PHP, Composer and Laravel already installed on your machine. Uh, if you do not, uh, then go to Laravel documentation uh, here at laravel.com uh, slash docs. You can see how you can get set up. Uh, notice here that you'll have to also install uh, Composer. So you can go to gitcomposer.org uh, forward slash download uh, to download Composer as well. And then finally, I'm also assuming that you already have an AWS account. You can register for an account here at aws.amazon.com. All of the resources that we'll be using today are included in the free tier. Uh, but once you're done today, uh, I would suggest that you delete each part so that you're, you're not charged. The steps that we have to do today are one, create the basic Laravel application. I'll be making an application using Laravel 7 and I'll, I'll be adding authentication just so that we can test out the database. Then uh, we'll be going to uh, code commit, AWS code commit to create the repository. Uh, and then we'll be creating the environment uh, in the Elastic Beanstalk. Uh, and finally, we'll create the code pipeline to connect both of them. All right, let's go ahead and make the Laravel application. And so I already have Laravel installed uh, as well as Composer and PHP on this machine. So I will only have to do Laravel new plus the name of the application. Uh, in this case, we'll just go ahead uh, and do block and that will go ahead and install all the prerequisites that we have here. Then let's go into that folder. Uh, so CD block, then let's go ahead and install the UI. And it'll take a second to download. All right, now that's done. And so with Laravel UI, you can actually do uh, either Bootstrap, View, or React uh, at the time of recording. Um, but in this case, we'll just go ahead and do Bootstrap. Uh, and one thing here, we'll have the, the auth flag because we want the authentication uh, already in there. And that will we'll install the migrations. Okay, so then uh, it's asking us to run npm install and npm run dev. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we have npm installed and let's just run uh, dev. Yeah, and you can see that even though we installed Bootstrap, it still has uh, some remnants of view in there. Um, but anyway, all right, so now that we have everything installed, uh, let's just open this up in the browser. So let's start up the server, PHP Artisan Serve, and it'll bring us to localhost. You can copy that link, uh, open this up right here. And you can see that we have the Laravel application already done with the uh, register and login. Uh, links. Now that we've created the Laravel application, let's go ahead and enter into the AWS management console and go to code commit. Uh, so let's just search for code commit right here. It'll bring us. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new repository. Uh, repository name, I'll just call it blog as well. Um, yeah, you can give it a description if you want. That's up to you. Uh, tags, you don't need any. Uh, we won't be writing anything in Java, so you can leave that unchecked. And let's go ahead and create. All right, in here, uh, actually we we'll wanna be using SSH to get in uh, to the blog itself. Uh, note that I already have 
an SSH key already set up. If you don't have that set up, you will have to go through uh, steps one through three. Uh, but since I already have that set up, the only thing that I will need from here uh, is the, the endpoint essentially for the repository. So let me go ahead and copy that. And then I need to go over to the terminal once again. Let's start a Git repository. So we have Git init. So we're initializing Git, Git remote, add origin. So we're adding this SSH uh, as the origin um, for the remote repository. Then we will add all of the files and, whoops, and we'll go ahead and commit all of them uh, with a message of initial commit. And uh, finally, we'll push this onto the master branch. All right, and that should successfully uh, pass it here to the repository. So if we refresh, then we should see all of our files. Yes, here we do. Uh, we have all of our files in here uh, and they are ready to go. Uh, one thing I wanna note is that uh, we don't have the .env file, right? So normally that's in the git ignore uh, file right there. So let's go ahead uh, and since this will be what we have online, I will need to add the env uh, to the branch. And, and notice that this will, of course, be a private repository uh, and nobody should have access to that either. Uh, so let's go ahead and open that up into favorite code editor, uh, mine being VS Code. So I'll open that up. Uh, and so let's go into git ignore. And just for the moment, we'll comment that out. Uh, and actually I'll open the terminal up here uh, and we'll add this in as well so that it will push the environment file, the .env file uh, to the repository, which we will need uh, to be on the server. So we have git add, uh, git commit, sure, uh, add, it, or add um, no. comments.env from git ignore. And we'll push that back. Uh, to the server and let's go over here and we can refresh and it should there we go all right so emv is on there that is it for code commit for the moment all right so let's go over to elastic beanstalk uh let's go into his services elastic there we go search for it so this is the screen that you should be seeing at the moment uh, and so let's just create a new application uh, this will be maybe test blog for the application name don't really need any uh, tags in there uh, okay. so for the platform we definitely do need php of course this is all built on php but one thing i want you to notice here and it's not very clear so i want this uh, want to clarify this uh, pretty well so you may be wondering what is the difference between php 7.3 running on 64-bit Amazon Linux 2 versus on Amazon Linux. And the difference is that on Linux 2, you're running Nginx, whereas on Linux, you're running Apache. And um, just to make things easier, so we don't have to set anything else up, let's run, we need to run it on Apache. Uh, so let's select the 7.3 running on 64-bit Amazon Linux. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, we can just do the sample application. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. We'll be connecting uh, all of our code uh, through code pipeline. So let's go ahead and create the application right there. And this will take a while. Uh, so I'll cut off the video in a second and we'll wait for this to complete. So we can see here that Elastic Beanstalk has completed everything. Uh, and so the, the application is up here, the sample application. Uh, and this is what it will look like. So let's go ahead and actually just inspect the element for a second, uh, go into network and let's refresh. Just wanted to show you one thing, uh, look at any of these files. And you can see here the server is Apache. Uh, and so this is exactly what we want. Now that we have the environment set up uh, with Elastic Beanstalk, as well as the repository set up with uh, the code commit, uh, let's go ahead and connect the two with code pipeline. Uh, so let's. Uh, search for that here. And, uh, and so let's create the new pipeline here. 
and this will just be a test blog. All right, yeah, and it can have a service role, no problem. Uh, here's a role name. Uh, advanced settings, we can leave this all as default, no problem there. Next. All right, here, and here is the source. So that is going to be code commit. Notice that we could have actually used GitHub uh, or Bitbucket uh, if we wanted to, even S3 or ECR, uh, but in our case, we used code commit. Uh, and the reason we did code commit first, why we put the repository was, uh, otherwise we could not have connected it. So you definitely need to do uh, in that order. So doing the repository in code commit, as well as the environment in Elastic Beanstalk, uh, and then we can go ahead uh, and connect the two. So here we, got, we have the blog uh, and we want to uh, use the master branch. So one thing to note here is whenever you're developing, uh, always create a new branch. And whenever you're ready to push that to live onto the server, uh, then you can merge that with master, but otherwise you should be on a different branch. All right, now let's look at the uh, change detection options. Just leave this as Amazon CloudWatch events. So anytime you push to master, uh, this will make sure that uh, it pushes it into the pipeline uh, and it'll push it out uh, to the environment. Next, so you can add uh, a build stage uh, and you can do that with code build. At this point, we won't add that yet, but this is something that uh, for a more extensive application, you will want to do, uh, but we can skip it right now. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and click skip here. All right, and how do we want to deploy it? Well, we have Elastic Beanstalk. Uh, I'm using Ireland since that is the cheapest uh, in Europe. Um, and let's see, yes, so that is a test blog and test blog environment. So let's go next. All right, and we can review all of our settings that we have here. Um, no big changes. Yeah, let's go ahead and create the pipeline. So the pipeline has been created and you'll see here uh, that it's in progress, right? So it's in, it is a kind of a two-step pipeline. It's getting uh, the code from the source uh, and then I'll go ahead and deploy it. So. Ah, there we go. It succeeded in getting the information from the source. And let's see if it will go ahead and deploy it uh, to our application in Elastic Beanstalk. Now it'll take just a few minutes. We'll come back when it's done. All right, now we can see that uh, we have successfully deployed the application. So let's go back to, um, where are we? Yeah, here we go. Let's go back to Elastic Beanstalk. And what do you think? If I open up this link, what is going to happen? Is it going to go to the application or is there going to be an error? Let's see. And there's an error. Uh, and I'm guessing you know why. Uh, well, as you know, Laravel applications uh, go to the public folder. Uh, and so uh, we'll need to have that, we'll need to change that in the configuration. So let's go over here uh, to the sidebar on the left under configuration. Uh, under software, let's edit that in the document root, that should be public. Uh, so let's give that a try. Let's apply that uh, and it'll take a few minutes for uh, the changes to be, uh, to be taken into account. Now we can see that the environment has been successfully updated. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our application. And yeah, we can see here, uh, application is up and running. We can even go into the login and register pages. But uh, if we try to register, uh, let's do tests, test.com, simple password. Uh, and if we try to register, do you think it will work? No, it will not uh, because we haven't yet connected to the database. Uh, and we'll take a look at that in a second. Just want to see the error. All right, let's see. What we'll need to do is go back to our code uh, and see what actually do we need here. So in the environment file, uh, essentially we need to fill in this information because obviously uh, this isn't correct. So let's go back uh, here to uh, Elastic Beanstalk and see what information here we can get. Um, well, we can go back here to configuration and we can change two things here. So go all the way down to database, click edit. And here you, we can see uh, our database settings. So we want to use uh, MySQL in this case, uh, we can leave the default engine version. That's no problem. Uh, I would select uh, the T2 micro as that is still in the free tier, uh, unless of course, uh, you know you want a bigger tier. Um, 
Yeah, so let's leave all that. And for the username and password, let's go ahead and insert secure username and password. Be sure to write this down um, as it won't tell you at least the password later on. All right, so let's just go ahead and apply these changes. Uh, take a few minutes for it to um, configure uh, and then uh, we'll be right back. All right, now our settings have been updated uh, and our username and password have been updated into the database. So let's go ahead and change that uh, in our code and then we'll figure out what else we need. So let's go back to AWS code. Uh, and so the username I used was this one, password. Always make sure you have strong password. Still missing the database name and the database host uh, as well as the port. So let's go ahead, uh, come back here and let's see if we can find that. Well, we can find some of it uh, back here in the configuration uh, of the database. Uh, and now let's go ahead and find out uh, what is the database name. I can tell you it's EBDB, but let's go ahead and take a look uh, at it right here. All right, so here's our RDS, our relational database, uh, and here's the database identifier. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this. So here's that endpoint. Uh, ah, 3306, right? that is the port. Um, yeah, so we have the port 3306. And what are we missing? Well, we're missing the database name. And you can actually find that in the configuration tab right here. Uh, here we go. Uh, database name right here. It's EBDB. It's always that. Um, yeah, I guess you could change it. Uh, but for the moment, we will not. And here's the database name. Okay, so we have all that saved. Uh, and because we have continuous uh, integration, continuous development, we can just go ahead uh, and push this to our repository. So git add all, git commit to our, um, let's say we, we updated uh, env with database uh, information. And let's go ahead and push that to master. All right, so let's go ahead, let's go back here to the pipeline and let's watch that actually go through. Let me go back to the pipeline, test blog, you can see it's in progress, here we go. Uh, the source in progress and we'll come back when this is done. All right, as you can see, code pipeline has uh, successfully deployed this code. Uh, and so now we should have the connection to the database. Uh, so let me actually go ahead and close this uh, and we'll go back all right, to Elastic Beanstalk. Um, let's go back here and let's just open up uh, our application. So let's go back here to register and you may be thinking, well, we didn't migrate any of these databases. And you'd be right, we didn't. So I'll go ahead and register and we will see an error. All right. And so here uh, we have two options. One, uh, we could SSH into the server uh, and go ahead and run the migrations from there. And that's perfectly valid. Uh, and in fact, you will want to do that eventually uh, down the road. But the error page for Laravel is quite robust uh, and so you can actually run uh, the migrations right from the error message so let's go ahead and do that try it out does it work well it says refresh now so oh, you're logged in so uh, with the error message we were able to run the migrations didn't even need to uh, ssh into the database uh, or rather into the server uh, to run the migrations from there uh, we could do it straight from the error message which is very convenient and then yeah we can go ahead log out uh, we can log back in sotest.com with our secret password and log back in successfully there you have it folks uh what we've been able to do today was make a very simple laravel 7 application uh, hosted on aws uh, and run uh, ci cd on that with code commit and code pipeline i hope you found this video to be informative uh, if you have any questions uh, please feel free to write them in the comment section down below all right, thanks a lot, guys.